Okay, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> and welcome to this media briefing where we will zero in on Zika. As you may know, CAFA is the sole public health agency for the Caribbean, and our functions include the coordination of effective responses to public health crises in the Caribbean, as well as the provision of accurate, reliable, timely, and relevant public health information. It is therefore important that we clear the air on issues pertaining to the Zika virus. The advent of the Zika virus disease in our region of the Caribbean since last year is quite an historic event. In this press conference, I will give a few overview remarks to set the context, and then several of our CAFA professionals uh, and experts will cover various aspects of the disease. Zika virus, like chikungunya in 2014 and 2015, is historic. It's only rarely in our lives that you see a new disease emerge and spread through a population. And CARFA, like CAREC before, has a major part of its mission in discovering and monitoring the spread of new diseases with the support of member states and health workers who are on the front line, laboratories and airlines who deliver the specimens. Zika virus shows that while heart disease diabetes, cancer may be our biggest health problems and biggest health costs, we can never let our guard down where infectious diseases are concerned. And that is particularly so in our very tourism-dependent Caribbean region. And that's why we work with CDC, with PAHO, and with Caribbean Tourism Organization and Hotel and Tourism Association to face this challenge. Because it's a new disease, it's not completely clear how it will behave the situation is evolving, new information is emerging every day. In terms of context, we already have dengue fever. We have had for generations, and more recently, chikungunya. We also have other diseases, well, leptospirosis, in some countries, malaria, which can have symptoms similar to Zika. So doctors and health professionals need to bear this in mind and not, not necessarily assume it's, it's one or the other. While it's new to this region, we can see it spreading in South and Central America. And as with chikungunya, we have good conditions for spread. Nothing to be proud of. We have mosquitoes abundantly. We have a lot of travel in and out of the region. And we have people who are susceptible, like chikungunya. We've never met this disease before. Unless we reduce mosquitoes breeding greatly and or take precautions to avoid bites, it'll spread. But we need everyone's help to get that message across. This disease entered the Americas in 2014 when the first local cases were detected in South America and it spread up through Brazil. South of us, Suriname, Guyana, French Guyana, Brazil, Colombia, all have uh, now chikungunya. And in the CAFA member states, we have Guyana, Barbados, Haiti, other jurisdictions in the Caribbean. A total of 22 jurisdictions at the moment in the Americas are affected. There is no confirmation of Zika cases in Trinidad and Tobago, although we are working closely with the government to investigate suspected situations. Most people with Zika actually have no symptoms. They're, they're asymptomatic. Um, where they do have it, it's similar to dengue or chikungunya with fever and rash, muscle aches and pains. The rash often starts on the face, it seems, and spreads. But there are two particular concerns about this. One is the microcephaly, babies born with small heads, of mothers who got Zika in pregnancy. And in Brazil, there's been a big increase, as you probably know, 3,500 cases last year. If that rate applied to the Caribbean region, the Kafa member states, there might be something like 300 cases. And a country like Trinidad and Tobago, 20 to 25, to give some perspective. The second is a significant increase, apparently, in people with a neurological disease uh, called Guillain-Barre syndrome, like where you get, limbs get weaker, and <clears throat> in severe cases, life support may be required. There is no specific treatment or vaccine, so prevention is, is, the whole, is the key. People with Zika must avoid being bitten by mosquitoes during the first week uh, when they can transmit it. And health facilities need to be kept uh, clear of the virus as a result. Pregnant mothers are advised to take extra precautions to avoid being bitten. 
I must again note this is a new disease and it's not clear just how it will manifest. And also the fact that it is occurring as chikungunya a couple of years ago means that our mosquito control programs, systems are, are not working. And it's everybody's responsibility. This is why at CAFA we have flagged this issue to the highest policy level and are taking the necessary steps. Last week, I spoke to the Secretary General of CARICOM, Ambassador Erwin Larocque, to alert him to the possible health and economic impact of this so he can brief the heads of government at their intersessional meetings shortly. We have, as I mentioned earlier, the partnership with the Caribbean Tourism Organization and Hotel and Tourism Association, aiming to improve the quality and the competitiveness of the hotel and tourism industry, particularly by focusing on health and hygiene and environment uh, measures. And we have a partnership also with the Inter-American Development Bank that's providing some funding to build up these systems. We have linkages with academic institutions in and out of the Caribbean to research this problem. And with the CDC, Centers for Disease Control, the Public Health Agency of Canada and Public Health England, and soon Holland and France, CAFA has established a monthly Travelers Network for the Caribbean, where this, these uh, uh, provides a forum to discuss with these international public health agencies uh, what is going on in the region. And we have other innovations like the Zapakito game that you'll get a chance to download today if you don't have it already. So I'd like to set the, set the tone for, for the media conference with those opening remarks. Looking ahead is difficult to predict, again, just what this will do, whether it will pass through in a few months the way Chikungunya did, or whether it will be spread out over a period of years. It's certainly another significant change in the health and disease landscape in the Caribbean, the advent of Zika. Zika virus is an emerging mosquito-borne virus that was first identified in 1947 in monkeys in the Zika forest in Uganda, hence the name Zika. The virus was subsequently identified in humans in 1952 and with small outbreaks reported in Africa and parts of Southeast Asia. The virus was relatively unknown until 2007 when the large outbreaks reportedly began in several islands of the Pacific region. Zika virus entered the Americas in 2014 when the first local case of transmission was detected in Chile. In May 2015, local transmission was reported in Brazil, and since then, the Zika virus has spread to several countries and territories in the Americas and the Caribbean. Zika is transmitted primarily by the Aedes aegypti mosquito, the same mosquito which transmits chikungunya, dengue, and yellow fever, and which is present in every country in the Caribbean. Mosquitoes become infected when they feed on a person during the first week of infection with the virus, and in turn, these infected mosquitoes can then spread the virus to other persons through bites. The symptoms of Zika are similar to other mosquito-borne infections, such as dengue and chikungunya, and include fever, skin rashes, conjunctivitis, headache, muscle and joint pain, and a general feeling of being unwell. Only one in four persons infected with Zika virus may develop symptoms, which are usually mild and last for two to seven days. However, serious complications can sometimes occur in persons who are infected. In 2013, during large outbreaks of Zika in French Polynesia, national health authorities reported potential neurological and autoimmune complications of Zika virus disease, which include Guillain-Barre syndrome, GBS, and meningitis. In 2015, local health authorities in Brazil detected neurological syndromes, including GBS, in some patients who were recently infected with the Zika virus. As at January 17, 2016, more than 3,500 cases of microcephaly, smaller than normal head size, and 46 related deaths have been reported in areas where the Zika virus is circulating. This, of course, gives cause for concern as the evidence points to a potential link between Zika infection and microcephaly in babies born to mothers who were infected with the virus during pregnancy. We still do not understand the relationship between Zika virus and microcephaly in babies, 
but the possibility that there is a link gives reason for public health concern. Investigations are ongoing into understanding this relationship and other potential causes of the increase in the number of cases of microcephaly as there is yet no de definitive link between the two. Zika virus is diagnosed through PCR, polymerase chain reaction, which is a laboratory technique, and virus isolation from blood samples. There is currently no vaccine or treatment available to prevent or treat Zika infection. People sick with Zika virus should get plenty of rest, drink enough fluids to prevent dehydration, and treat pain and fever with common medicines such as acetaminophen or paracetamol. If symptoms worsen, they should seek medical care and advice. Aspirin and other non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, NSAIDs, like ibuprofen, should be avoided until dengue can be ruled out to reduce the risk of hemorrhage. Zika is a new virus to the Caribbean population, which, of course, has no immunity. And so, as a region, we need to be prepared by putting measures in place to prevent and or reduce its spread. Mosquitoes and their breeding sites pose a significant risk factor for Zika virus infection. The Aedes aegypti mosquito vectors are aggressive daytime biters, prefer to bite people, and live in and around humans and their environs. These mosquitoes typically lay their eggs in standing water in things like barrels, used tires, buckets, flower pots, vases, in any type of container which can collect water. Therefore, prevention and control lies in reducing mosquito infestation levels through source reduction, that is removal and modification of breeding sites, and reducing contact between mosquitoes and people. Source reduction includes activities such as securely covering water barrels, placing used tires in areas where they cannot collect water, emptying flower vases and scrubbing the insides to dislodge mosquito eggs. The inspecting of premises such as homes, schools, offices once a week for at least 10 minutes to identify and remove breeding sites or potential breeding sites can be very effective in reducing the Aedes aegypti mosquito populations. One home or yard breeding mosquitoes can supply the neighborhood, so there is a collective responsibility as well. In a way, we are indeed our brother's keeper. As part of CARFA's continued support to member states in responding to the growing challenges of vector-borne diseases in the region, a new and innovative mobile app called Zapakito, short for Zap a Mosquito, was launched in December 2015. Zapakito is packed with facts and trivia and is a simple and informative way for children to receive information about the breeding sites and prevention and control of mosquitoes. The app is being promoted across the region and is now available for download free on Google Play. Persons can also protect themselves from mosquito bites by using insect repellent, wearing clothes, preferably light colored, that cover as much of the body as possible, using physical barriers such as screens, closed doors and windows, and sleeping under mosquito nets. Special attention and help should be given to those who may not be able to protect themselves adequately, such as young children, the sick, or elderly. In view of this, we are issuing a challenge to health authorities to encourage zero tolerance of mosquitoes in and around public health facilities. Mosquito breathing at these facilities can contribute to the spread of epidemics, as this is where persons who are sick gather for medical attention. Environmental health staff are asked to increase mosquito surveillance activities in and around sea and airports also in an effort to render them mosquito-free. The measures which have been put in place to deal with outbreaks of dengue and more recently chikungunya are the same measures which need to be strengthened for dealing with Zika. The enemy is the same Aedes aegypti mosquito. Thank you. As we have been hearing, the Caribbean is one of the most tourism-dependent regions in the world. Thus, travel-related diseases like Zika have the huge potential to negatively affect the economies and tourism destination reputation of Caribbean countries. In fact, according to our partners, 
the Caribbean Tourism Organization, or CTO, and the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, the CHDA, there are already reports of travel cancellations in the Caribbean due to Zika. While tourism is the Caribbean's major economic earner, it also contributes to disease spread. The CTO indicated a record 26 million stayover tourist arrivals and 25 million cruise ship arrivals in 2014. This was a 5% rise over 2013, and this trend continued in 2015. These visitors spent US $29 billion, another record for the Caribbean tourism. The US continues to be the region's primary market, with, with nearly 13 million Americans, just under half of the total arrivals for the region. However, high and increasing levels of visitor arrivals increase the potential risk for visitors and locals transmitting or acquiring diseases from each other. This was typified by SARS in 2000, the H1N1 pandemic in 2009, chikungunya in 2013, and now Zika. Thus, heightened concern, alerts, and specific measures for travelers have resulted from regional and international agencies such as the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Pan American Health Organization, the World Health Organization, and the Centers for Disease Control. The consequences of reduced tourist numbers for the millions of people in the Caribbean whose livelihoods depend on the sector can be serious, contributing to adverse economic and social burden on Caribbean economies. As travel increases, the number of Zika cases among travelers would likely increase, and the potential negative impact on Caribbean tourism-dependent economies will likely escalate. In May 2015, the first local transmission of Zika virus was reported in South America. To date, no local transmitted Zika cases have been reported in the USA, but cases have been reported in returning travelers. Local spread of the virus in the U.S. can stem from imported cases of the Aedes vector, which are present in some states. Consequently, the U.S. Center for Disease Control and Prevention, through their Travelers Health Branch, has been urging all travelers visiting Latin America and the Caribbean countries where Zika virus circulation has been confirmed to take extra precautions against mosquito bites to avoid contracting the virus. The CDC's travel notice, designed to inform travelers and clinicians among, about current travel health-related issues to specific destinations, especially those posing a risk to the U.S., can be of three types. Level one is the watch level, where travelers are recommended to practice usual precautions. Level two is, re is referred to as the alert level, where travelers are recommended to practice enhanced precautions. And level three, travelers are recommended to avoid non-essential travel. On fi Friday, January 22nd, 2016, the CDC upgraded the warning for selected countries in Latin America and the Caribbean where local acquired cases were confirmed to a level, true, level two travel notice. This notification recommends special precautions for pregnant women who are advised to consider postponing travel and for women of childbearing age who are planning to become pregnant, who are advised to consult with their doctor before traveling. Due to the probable association between Zika virus infection in pregnancy and adverse fetal outcomes, all travelers are, are urged to, as usual, to adhere strictly to mosquito bite pre precautions. So, how is CAFA addressing the impact of Zika on tourism? Well, CAFA, through its integrated regional tourism and health program, in collaboration with our partners, the the Caribbean Tourism Organization and the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association is taking this holistic, aggressive approach to travel-related Zika and other mosquito-borne infections through prevention and control that includes the following. One, providing updated guidelines for Zika prevention in travelers and in hotels or guest houses for circulation in hotels and other tourism stayover lodgings by CHDA and also in cruise ships by the Cruise Line International Agency. Two, an aggressive public health awareness campaign for the tourism industry that includes sharing facts with the media, traveler and pub, travelers and the public. Three, 
an agreement with the Caribbean Tourism Organization and the Hotel Association to embark on a joint enhanced vector control program in hotels. This will include sharing of best practices with the industry via various means, including webinars. Four, joint and ongoing discussion with the Center for Disease Control Travelers Health branch and other international agencies like PAHO, the Public Health Agency of Canada and the Public Health England. Re travel advisories, Zika prevention, its risk and its impact on tourism. Five, holding teleconferences and webinars with hotels, cruise ship industry, and the ministries of health to have a joint approach re respect to proper su surveillance guidelines and a joint public health action if necessary. And finally, as, the, as Dr. Hospitalis indicated earlier, using the Caribbean Travel Health Network forum for rapid dissemination of information and outbreak prevention and control. CATNET, or the Caribbean Travel Health Network, was established by CAFA in December 2015 um, as a network of public health agencies designed to rapidly share information on issues of public health concern to travelers visiting the Caribbean region to promote global health security. Current agencies on this network include CDC, the Public Health England, and the Public Health Agency of Canada. So in conclusion, I would like to send, CAFA would like to send a message to the travelers coming to the Caribbean. Don't let the mosquitoes ruin your travel. While there is no vaccine to prevent contradicting, con contracting Zika or medicine to treat Zika, travelers can protect themselves against Zika and other mosquito-borne infections like chikungunya and dengue by preventing mosquito bites. We, de we thus urge travelers to use insect repellent, stay and sleep in screen or air-conditioned rooms, and wear long sleeve shirts and long pants. In the same vein, we would like to send a message to hotels and guest houses to enhance measures to avoid mosquito breeding in your compound and surroundings, including avoid storing water in outdoor containers that can collect water and become breeding sites. Cover water tanks or reservoirs so that mosquitoes do not get in. Uncover or unblock gutters and drains to release stagnant water. Install mosquito screening on windows and doors. And consider supplying guests with bed nets or, and repellents when necessary or have them available for purchase. And finally, provide staff and guests with information. In support of our collaborative work, that we are doing with the Caribbean Tourism Organization and the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. We would now like to have a statement read by Mr. Hugh Riley, who is the Chief Executive Officer of the Caribbean Tourism Organization. Thank you, Dr. Indara. It's a brief statement, uh, a joint statement, which will be issued today by the Caribbean Tourism Organization and the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association. Public health authorities in the Caribbean are working diligently to mitigate the effects of the Zika virus. The Zika alpha of Big C is spread primarily by the Aedes aegypti mosquito. The public sector-led Caribbean Tourism Organization, CTO, and its private sector counterpart, the Caribbean Hotel and Tourism Association, CHDA, are in close contact with the Caribbean Public Health Agency, CARFA, to monitor and research the Zika cases that have now surfaced in some Caribbean destinations and to communicate prevention and control measures to residents and visitors. The CTO and the CHDA are in communication with their respective stakeholders and are observing national, regional, and international health protocols in dealing with mosquito-borne viral diseases, which can be found in tropical countries. With more than 700 islands in 30 territories in the Caribbean, conditions will vary from one nation to another. The CTO and CHDA will continue to monitor all developments related to mosquito-borne viral diseases and to support appropriate communication, education, and prevention initiatives. And we then give uh, two uh, uh, links to the website, to the CARFA website, where there are specific guidelines for travelers and specific guidelines for hotels and guest houses. And there ends the statement by the CHDA and the CTO. Um, and 
with your permission, Dr. Indar, I'd just like to mention um, five very quick steps. We got together in the CHDA, uh, Frank Canito and Carolyn Trubetskoy, the new president, got together with us uh, and um, outlined these steps. They're not uh, they are not the only things that will happen, uh, but we, we, we thought we would outline that there's an aggressive public awareness campaign uh, which we are uh, mounting together. Uh, we're encouraging the authorities to take immediate and aggressive efforts to control the muscular population and prevent the spread of the virus. We are sharing information and procedures with industry management, staff, and the travel industry via uh, various means, including webinars, as Dr. Hindar uh, just mentioned. We are sharing the facts using all media, uh, and we are making sure that the public has access to our information via all media. In other words, we're using uh, social media as well as uh, traditional media to get the word out. So that's not an exhaustive list, but though that's the, the kernel of the, of the actions that we're immediately taking as the CTO of the CHDA. Thank you. There are some important ethical issues to consider regarding Zika virus infection in the Caribbean. To limit the effects of any possible epidemic, good early communication and adequate community engagement and collaboration are required. Our communication must therefore outline sufficient details for persons to realize its relevance to them individually before the onset of the illness within their country or their community. And so, at the governmental level, good, helpful communication, information about the Zika virus, and effective measures to minimize infection through eliminating mosquito breeding sites and measures to avoid being bitten by a mosquito should occur. This helps to avoid confusion, miscommunication, and misunderstanding. Further, as in every infectious disease, our relevant authorities should not downplay the risks, as this could lead to higher rates of preventable infections. Neither should we overstate the risk, as we would not want any panic or any lack of public trust occurring subsequently, as this can be long-lasting. It is always good to provide timely, adequate, and appropriate information, as we are now doing. And so we are telling you of the nature of this disease, the types of interventions to be implemented, and the reasons for these interventions. We should always have a proper balance and avoid politically polarizing positions on health matters. Further, our Caribbean countries have an obligation to reduce the risk of ill health that people might impose on each other within as well as across borders. Medical practitioners also have the responsibility to inform and counsel their patients extensively on this matter and to work with their ministries of health to minimize the effects and avoid unnecessary alarm concerning Zika virus infection. Please go forth and deliver this message. As Dr. Hospitalis has told you, Zika virus has been identified in 20 countries, including four CARFA member states to date. Given the existence of the competent vector Aedes aegypti, in most countries in the region, there is a high probability that Zika can and will spread to other countries in the Caribbean. Public health surveillance is a key strategy in the fight against any disease and entails the ongoing scrutiny of all aspects of spread of a disease pertinent to effective control. Key is a high index of suspicion by health providers. For example, to take a travel history in patients presenting with a Zika-like illness, as well as environmental surveillance. 
before an area or country is declared to be having local spread or an outbreak, the laboratory confirmation is critical. In light of this possibility of spread, CARFA has developed the capacity for Zika virus testing and has been actively engaged in the testing of samples from many member states as they step up their surveillance activities, focused on detecting the arrival of this virus to our collective shores. At this time, polymerase chain reaction PCR testing, capable of identifying genetic material from the Zika virus, is the only reliable test for the virus. Antibody testing is less conclusive because a large proportion of the populations in our member states will have antibodies to other similar viruses like the dengue virus, endemic in many parts of the region, and that can confuse test results. So as a result, testing of samples is limited to those which have been collected early in the course of the illness, within the first three days, I repeat, within the first three days, when levels of Zika virus are highest in the bloodstream, so that PCR testing can pick it up and be specific. Please ensure in your countries that there is adherence to our packing and shipping guidelines as well if there are cases which need further discussion because of peculiar circumstances, we stand ready to provide clarification and guidance. It is important to note that the laboratory testing for Zika virus is geared towards the diagnosis of the outbreak at the initial stages. And therefore, once the outbreak has been established in your country, it is not necessary to identify every single case of Zika virus that occurs. As many people have mild disease and may not come to clinical care or require a test at all, the large proportion of persons who contract Zika will not know that they have it. The numbers of clinically confirmed cases are therefore not intended to reflect the actual number of cases in any given country. Rather, lab confirmation of Zika virus circulation is meant to keep track of the appearance of Zika in new areas and provide updates on the spread of the virus. In most cases, physicians will need to use clinical criteria, that is, patients' signs and symptoms as well as epidemiological data on the circulation of Zika virus in the areas from which their patients present in order to come to a diagnosis of suspected Zika virus. Special attention is warranted in the follow-up of patients for varying types of neurological sequelae after Zika virus infection and particular attention should be paid to follow up of pregnant patients who present with febrile illness compatible with Zika virus and their offspring. In light of current concerns regarding a potential connection between Zika virus infection in pregnancy, especially early pregnancy, and the development of microcephaly in infants of affected mothers. CARFA is currently in the process of piloting systems to facilitate the documentation of such cases should they occur, so as to detect any similar patterns of association in the Caribbean region as early as possible. Barbados has been chosen as a pilot site for this activity, which is occurring this week. It is important that we follow the course of this disease in the Caribbean very closely from more than one perspective. The first is that it is new to this region and its potential impact is still largely unknown. The second 
is that we must provide the best epidemiological data in order for countries to keep abreast of the best practices in addressing the clinical manifestations of the illness, as well as the best practices in vector control. To this end, we are also requesting that countries send specimens for severe cases of Zika, especially hospitalized cases where Zika infection is suspected. We will be working through the ministry's vector control programs to ensure that vector control around health centers is optimal and healthcare workers themselves are using the correct precautions. Third, is the potential for a negative economic impact on our heavily tourism dependent countries. Thus, we partner, as you have heard, with the regional tourism entities like CHTA and CTO to provide them with timely data and guidance to achieve the best approach to mitigating the negative impact. CARFA looks forward to maintaining an open channel of communication with the media and member states as the Zika epidemic unfolds and we anticipate the cooperation of all the stakeholders in ensuring the most evidence-based response to this rapidly developing situation. How does the um, mosquito-borne illness spread? Because surely mosquitoes can't fly from country to country. How does it spread from country to country? Is it that an infected person is bitten and then it becomes a carrier? Please explain. Um, yes, it is that persons who are infected with the virus can travel because you do not get sick immediately um, when you get bitten by an infected mosquito one. And you also have persons who may not have um, be showing any symptoms who do have the virus. So what you have is that persons are moving from country to country and they themselves are infected. And then the mosquito in whichever country, as we have already said, the Aedes aegypti mosquito is very competent vector of the virus and is present in almost all of our countries. And so the mosquitoes are there ready and waiting to pick up the virus from someone and then bite someone else and pass the virus on because as we said earlier, um, our populations are immune. So people can get infected that way. Just a follow up question. So um, when mosquito lazy eggs, is the virus also spread to the eggs? That um, is something that is still under investigation because with dengue and with chikungunya, they have found that there is what's called transovarial transmission where the mosquito can actually pass the virus through to the next generation. But as we said, for Zika, it's very, very new. So it may be possible that um, in laboratory studies it may be found, but we have to um, look into field studies to see if that is happening. But at the moment the most effective mode of transmission is from person to person via the mosquito. Um, so if a pregnant woman is bitten by an Aedes aegypti mosquito carrying the Zika virus, is there any intervention that could be done to prevent a child from getting, the baby from getting microcephaly? Like Dr. Paulson just said, it's early on for us to know. But we do know that several women who got pregnant um, did not have babies who had microcephaly. So the other thing that I need you to know is that in the tests of the ones who, who did get um, microcephaly, not every person has had virus isolated. So that's why there is no clear link between having Zika and having a child with microcephaly. It is still something under investigation. So I can't have an answer for you as to some intervention that could be made. That is why we are stressing on the fact that the intervention is not having a mosquito around to bite anybody in the first place. You have to realize that this Edes is like a very good family friend in the Caribbean. No, it's domesticated. It lives around us. It moves around us to work where we go for recreation. So the whole thing is about getting rid of that mosquito and not having the bite at all. Hi, good morning. Sonolala from C uh, sorry, from 103FM. 
I understand uh, you said that I can, the mosquito can, well, basically run from human to human to get into the country, but the Minister of Health, Mr. Terence Helsing, he, uh, he actually put an uh, inspection, uh, inspection notice on cargo ships coming into here that where tires coming from Brazil need to be inspected. So is it that, how is the, how is the prevalence, how possible is that to come into here than, uh, you know what I'm trying to say? One of the ways which mosquitoes can move is through what we call passive transmission. And so in the case of the tires, there's another mosquito um, species that we didn't mention earlier, it's called Aedes albopictus, which has been moved from Asia to the United States through the used tire industry, and also from the United States and so on to other countries. So there are a few countries which have that mosquito vector. That is the one that um, can lay the eggs in the tire. And when the tires are out in the tire yards, they get filled with water. The mosquitoes lay the eggs. And then the tires are emptied, the water out of the tires. The tires are packed into containers and shipped worldwide. But the tires all have the, some of them would have the mosquito eggs still in the tires. And the mosquito eggs are viable. So if you understand, then the tires are brought, for example, to Trinidad taken out of the containers, left out in the open, rain falls, water collects, and those mosquito eggs would hatch, and then you would have the introduction of that mosquito um, species into the country. So in terms of, it links back to the question about if the mosquitoes can um, lay eggs with the virus in, it's all still under investigation. So in terms of trying to prevent the introduction of mosquito species, that of course is one measure that would be targeted by countries. Be aware also that the mosquito egg can live for as long as nine months before it hatches. In a dry environment, it is able to survive. Right, with regards to the chicken gunia uh, disease last year, is there any report at all that said that how it came into the country, whether it's through the airport, through humans, or whether it's through cargo ships? I don't think, I don't think that that might ever be known. Chikungunya spread country to country, one a week, one every 10 days during 2014. And actually, if you will, jumped over Trinidad. It appeared to have been in Guyana before it was confirmed here. But I don't think it will ever be possible to figure out whether just how it came. Murray House, CNMG. Could you list me again the four COPA member states um, what physical the virus is? These are the four member states where Zika has been isolated in the samples that were sent to us. Do you understand the difference between what you just asked me and what I said? So the four countries that have had Zika virus isolated from the samples are Guyana, Barbados, Suriname, and Haiti. What we have been ad advising for several months is that the country's surveillance system should be very strong so that it can track the, the disease. Along with that, in parallel, is the strength of the vector control program because I told you the way to control the spread of Zika is to make sure that there are so few mosquitoes that there aren't mosquitoes to bite an infected person and spread it to someone who isn't infected. As well, the ministries of health have to issue clear guidance to the entire health sector, public sector and private sector. So from the clinical perspective, they have the index of suspicion to check for if a person has Zika or not, if it's necessary. They also will know that there is no specific treatment, so it is all about reassuring your patient, giving your patient details of what are the things that are dangerous that will require that they come back to the doctor, and also ensuring that the health services are aware that this is a suspected case of Zika, so the health services are able to be sure of the burden. The other thing that the health authorities need to do is to ensure that Within the hospital setting, if there are suspected cases of Zika, that these cases are 
samples are taken and sent to us because we need to characterize how Zika is going to look in the Caribbean. It may look like Brazil or it may not. It may be completely different. There were things about H1N1 in the Caribbean which were different from what happened with H1N1 elsewhere. So it's important for health authorities to give us information that we can then work with to help to characterize what is happening. The other thing that needs to be going on is what has been happening in several countries. They need to be communicating with the general public so that the general public is quite aware that there is Zika, quite aware of what they can do themselves individually to ensure that we have the best approach to vector control. So there are several things that the CARFA, the CARFA organization has been telling the community things that have been put in place by countries. And then it's very important to remember the message from the ethicists. Because we do not want undue alarm being raised. It isn't just a matter of the fact that we have citizens, but as we said, we're heavily tourism dependent. So this is part of the reason why we are talking to you. So another thing that is the next step is that CARFA has to make sure that the press has the right information and has the right delivery of that information so that although everyone is informed, everyone is informed of the correct scientific information. Uh, something we, something you, uh, I think the Ministry of Health did last year is sending out public health inspectors when there was the emergence of chicken gunia to uh, various houses checking to see to clean the yard and so on. Any partner would CAFA be partnering with the Ministry of Health in that regard this year? We work closely with the Ministries of Health and also the Environmental Health Departments. So we give guidance as necessary. So the measures that they were undertaking during chikungunya and also which would have been undertaken routinely as a result of the fact that dengue is endemic in the region are the same measures that they would be beefing up. So with guidance from us through the Ministries of Health, then there are standard protocols that are followed which they would execute. With the carnival season among us, I just want to know, um, are we ready, one, and is CARFA doing anything with the airport in terms of screening or anything like that? Or could screening be done for the Zika virus? Trinidad Tobago has carnival, as so do most other countries in the region now, which brings visitors from elsewhere in the Caribbean and, and internationally. Uh, as was mentioned earlier, a high percentage of people with this infection actually have no symptoms. So there's no place for screening at airports. It, it just doesn't make sense. Uh, what is important is high index of suspicion, good knowledge of the population. So people are aware, look, I just went to Guyana, I just went to so-so-so. And, -so, and they can um, take uh, precautions, see their physician, and then avoid getting bitten by mosquitoes for the first week while you have the fever. So you don't spread the disease to family and loved ones. That's a very important message. In theory, if as soon as you get fever or your family has it, you can isolate yourself, bed nets, repellents, you greatly reduce the spread. And so the answer to somebody's question about once the first case is detected, you really have to intensify your public health measures, your education, control of the mosquitoes, intensify education, especially to pregnant moms or mothers who are thinking of getting pregnant, how important it is to avoid being bitten by mosquitoes. Um, and and that, that's, that's, that, that's, that, that's what I want to emphasize. And, and to add, to what Dr. Hospital has just said. This is a good opportunity for the media to really highlight our message to travelers, um, which is actually on our website. Um, where we are asking travelers you know, to be aware, to use insect repellent, uh, to wear light, long sleeve clothing where possible. And if you are staying, not just in hotels, you know, we have a lot of guest houses um, in Trinidad for a carnival to ensure well, Either they are actually screened off or using bed nets if the rooms are not air conditioned. So really it's a good chance to urge our, um, our travelers to protect themselves and as well as the hotel and the guest houses to have a clean environment and to protect um, the mosquitoes from, from um, biting as much as possible. And we have to emphasize that 
as we have seen in other countries, for every five persons that have the virus, four of them do not show any symptoms. Only one in five will actually be ill enough to present to the healthcare setting. So there is no need for alarm. Four out of five persons will have no symptoms and go around as per normal. I think the emphasis for Carnival is protection from mosquito bites. And sunburn. And everything else. <laughs> so for Zika, the use of the repellent is going to be important. Uh, Carnival has evolved into a little clothing zone. So you're going to need to use a proper repellent, um, which will last for the maximum period. And you're going to need to walk with it um, or jump with it so that you can reapply as necessary. And if I can add a plug for foodborne diseases, it's a good opportunity to ensure, you know, hygienic measures are taken um, during carnival. Washing your hands and, you know, ensuring that you're getting safe food from uh, safe vendors.